Hi folks, I'm Stephen Crowley. Thanks for joining me again. Today's painting. I was looking at Bob Ross painting on my screen here while I was painting this one, just for inspiration. Not, not, I didn't want to copy or anything like that, but just to get a general layout of the of the land and things like that. So before I show you the colours for this one, just a quick plug for my new book. This is Watercolour Painting Made Simple, Volume 3, just available now on Amazon, Softback, Hardback, Kindle, lots and lots of step-by-step -step photographs to guide you through each painting. I think there's, there's nine paintings in this one. There's all the paintings. Well, there's eight, there's eight of them anyway. So there's plenty to be going on at, going on with. So let me, that's, that's the book there on Amazon. You'll see the link and everything in the description. So let me just show you the colours I've used for this one. So the palette, as always, all the same colours. Oh, let's get the right way around. Always have it the same way. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna. I think burnt umber is the only one I didn't use. I don't think I used raw sienna either. So use the other five, the light red down here. And then most of it, as always, done with a large Ron Hansen hake brush. And then a couple of rigger brushes, like number three, and then just a tiny little rig hatch for doing birds and things. So I'm just going to kick it off with some clean water. <clears throat> and then starting with the light, lightest colours, so I'm just going to go a bit of yellow, a bit of yellow in there, then add a bit of light red to it, make it sort of orange colour, a bit of a lizard in there as well, let's get in there, something like that, lizard, ultramarine, Get a bit of tissue on that in a minute, brush a few clouds into it. Let's clean that. And we get a bit more blue. Just get a little bit muddy the colours. So you know, stick better. Brush that down like that. Just into this yellow section. Get a bit more glycerin down this side there. A bit of tissue in there. So just a few little clouds. I could take it out a bit more, but I'm going to leave it like that, I think. I might just strengthen the sides. The pain was grey in there as well, just to darken the corners. And then where I'm going to push the mountains in, and just darken it a little bit more. Let's just wet that a little bit more because there's some water down the bottom. I just want to blend it in a bit better. Just going to go same colours. Push this in from the sides. Right, let's just get it flat first against the board, then I'll get the um, piece of card out and I'll start putting those mountains in. Um, yeah. Just watching all that water droop it to the bottom. Right, 
It's got something on it. Just leave it. Look at something like that. Soak that water up. <coughs> right, just make sure that's flat. I'm just going to give it a quick dry and then start putting a few trees in, I think. So, quick air dress, air dryer. I see why I wet the water down below, just to get that nice blended central light area. If, if it was too dry, you'd end up with hard edges. So, I want to put some trees in there. So, I'm just mixing quite a dark lemon yellow, ultramarine, Payne's grey. I want it nice and dark to contrast against the light at the bottom of the sky. So, I'm going to have a big tree up there, something like that. And just Use the corner of the brush just to fill it out. So they're not all nice and symmetrical, which looks a bit naff. Um, right, and some quite dark land there. Just work its way down. I don't want to paint over that light area too much. I'll just just jut that across it like that. I'm going to go over on the left as well. I've got to, I've got to be honest, I am, I'm looking at Bob Ross painting as I'm doing this. Some of you might recognise the way I do the trees. Um, just using it as a general, general guide. Now this one might go a bit pretty high now with this tree on this side. I'm just using the corner of the brush, bringing it right the way down. Stick another one just to the left of it. Just use the corner of the brush again. Very corner of the brush into the water just to loosen the paint slightly. Okay. Okay. 
little bits of grasses and things. So I just paused it for a second and just go and have a look from the as far away as I can. And I'm 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 fairly happy with that I think. Um I think what I'm gonna do now is just switch the little rigger brush and I'm just gonna stick that little bird just up there. Let's put some of them on there. Three little birds. And then last but not least, I'm just gonna try and find somewhere to sign it. Let's stick out the mounts on it and see what it looks like. So here's our finished painting in the mounts. So let's go and have a closer look. Try to get as much colour as I could into the sky, starting with just plain lemon yellow and then with a bit of um, light red, a lizarin, uh, from orange, or basically all sorts of reds and, and then a bit of ultramarine there. Darker. I've tried to sort of darken it in the corner. I remember I, I, I can't remember. Well, it might have been Rob, Bob Ross who said darken your corners. It just seems to frame the picture better. Then just took a tissue just to create a bit of texture with these clouds in the sky. And then brushed all that colour into the horizon line. With I've then scraped out the mountains. Just very simply using the corner of a plastic card. Nothing complicated. Then I re-wet this water area, you just to get this nice blended, not quite so dark but so light in the in the in the central area. And then you can see to try and get this sort of evening um, silhouette style. Get some nice contrast, push these darks right across the light area there, and then just flick up with the with the paint brush to suggest these grasses and reeds growing in, in the foreground. Very simple trees. Just use, just put your skeleton in, just just your tree trunk in with a chisel edged hake, and then just use the corner of the brush, using broader and broader strokes as you work your way down to the base of the tree. Same on this left hand side. Just simple corner strokes as you work your way down, and then our little birds there enjoying the view over the mountains and the lakes. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Um, any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, this painting is always on eBay. Um, there's more videos on Patreon. The books are on Amazon. You'll see all the links below in the description. So keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.